Hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Crystal, Managing Director for Programs and Partnerships here at Raising a Reader. Raising a Reader is a national family engagement and early literacy organization with the mission to help families develop, practice, and grow home-based literacy routines. I'm here today to share a little bit more information about Raising a Reader with you. So we're here today because all of us truly believe that all children deserve the opportunity to realize their full potential. We're also here because we all realize that in order to help children realize their full potential, we have to start with families, strengthening families. Early literacy and education are keys to closing the persistent literacy and opportunity gaps that exist in our country. We're also here in an answer to the literacy crisis. This literacy crisis was around in 1999 when Raising a Reader was founded and is here 25 years later. Parts of this literacy crisis are rooted in racial inequity that is embedded in our society and it has so deeply permeated our early learning and our educational systems. And that has resulted in significant achievement gaps and it has disproportionately affected our children in every state throughout our United States of America, especially for our communities of people of color. We know that about over half, in fact, about 61% of our families living in economically disadvantaged communities may not own a single children's book. We also know that less than half of children entering kindergarten are actually prepared and ready to learn, and that we're leaving over 60% of our kiddos behind in fourth grade. That means 60% of our children are not proficient in literacy in fourth grade and the ramifications that has on children's lifelong success. In fact, third grade and fourth grade are such pivotal moments in children's lives that it has, it has the ability to predict children's success in school, their high school graduation rates, their lifelong earning potential, and their overall ability to contribute to our nation's economy and security. We also know what we've seen in the NAEP scores as of the fall of 2022. Whereas we've made gains as a society in the past 20 years, the ripple effects from the pandemic and other, other societal implications have put us back over 30 years in reading and math scores. We've lost two decades or more of progress. So the time now is more than ever for raising a reader and other early literacy and family engagement interventions. So raising a reader is here with our mission to support families and inspire the development of literacy skills and a lifelong love of reading necessary to help children attain brighter futures. Our vision is that every child has the family support and the reading skills that they need to succeed in life. And we believe that all children deserve this opportunity to realize their full potential. And we truly believe the best way to support children is by helping to strengthen the families that they go home to every day. So a little bit about Raising Reader as an organization by the numbers. So we serve about 150,000 children and families across 34 to 36 states on any given year. Um, we have about 3,000 implementation sites. So this is different um, classrooms, different uh, schools, different centers, different libraries all across the country. We have about a 96 affiliate organization retention rate. So we partner with over 300 organizations across those 34 to 36 states on a given year. And 96% of those organizations stay with us year over year. We have 5 million books in rotation across the country, and hopefully most of those books are in families' homes, being enjoyed by families on an everyday basis. And our program has 39 independent evaluations. 
We work through a trusted network of affiliate agencies, public libraries, home visiting agencies, child care organizations, teen parent programs, schools, early Head Start, housing, anywhere in any agency that are serving children and families on a regular basis is an agency that can be a Raising a Reader partner. We are the sturdy bridge that supports children and families across systems. We also help build the capacity of these local agencies by providing things like training through our train the trainer models. So we train those agency partners and those agency partners train their local or regional sites and those local and regional sites in turn train the families and help support those families. You're provided with a program manager who is your coach, who is your confidant to help support you along the way during your tenure at Raising a Reader. We have monthly professional development sessions. We offer fundraising support, a peer learning network of support of over 300 early learning professionals, and of course, our research-based curriculum. We are an evidence-based and evidence-informed organization. So we have over 39 independent evaluations that are helping prove the efficacy of our programs. So we are helping families, number one, increase access to books in their homes. We are increasing the frequency and dosage of shared reading times. So families are reading more often for longer periods of time as a result of participating in a Raising a Reader program. We're also increasing the quantity and quality of those caregiver child interactions. And we want those caregiver child interactions. We want that bonding time, the responsivity. We're improving early literacy skills. So although we are not an organization that's teaching children how to read, what we know from the science of reading is that children have to have that exposure to shared reading opportunities, to early language, to vocabulary. And so children's early literacy skills are naturally being improved through the behaviors encouraged with raising a reader. And of course, they're experiencing those vocabulary gains. Overall, we are also addressing conditions that lead to that third grade literacy. So we're increasing conditions that lead to the kindergarten readiness. We're increasing the book access. We're encouraging families to read three or more times a week. Again, that frequency and dosage. We're increasing the children's intrinsic motivation to read. Um, we are increasing children's love of reading through our different programs. And of course, our book collection, the heart of our program. We have over 2,000 titles in 13 beautiful languages, and we truly believe in that window and that mirror experience. We truly want children and families to see themselves within the pages of the books that we are sharing through our red book bags and through our take-home programs. So you are gonna see home languages. You are going to see special collections such as American Sign Language, Braille, wordless books, uh, books in Tagalog, Vietnamese, Somali, Nepali, and so on. You're gonna see these books organize, organized developmentally. You are going to see uh, collections such as Exceptional Diversity. You are going to see STEM, financial literacy. Uh, the list goes on and on. We are truly here to make sure that children have that window to the outside world, but they also have that mirror and they can see themselves within the pages of a Raising a Reader book and they have that self-efficacy and they feel as important as they are that their site, their educator, their county, whomever feels that they are important because they can see themselves in the pages of a book. So let me just share with you a couple of Raising a Reader's amazing programs. We have our classic red book bag program that is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year in 2024, our family shared reading program and our super summer learning adventures program. So I'm here today to talk with you about our classic red book bag program. So our classic red book bag program is just our beautiful flagship program that has been around since 1999. And in this program, we are helping families build, practice, and grow home-based literacy routines. So with the build part, 
With our train the trainer model, again, we are training agencies to train their educators and sites to then in turn train their families. Number one, you are your child's first and most important teacher and you have everything it takes to help your children learn and grow and thrive no matter where you are in your journey to literacy, no matter what your background is, no matter what your language is, no matter where you're from. Families and parents and caregivers and special grownups, you have everything it takes and you are the architects of your children's brain. We need families to know this. We need families to realize that they are their child's brain builders. They're their child's advocates. And one of the best ways to help your children learn and grow and thrive is by simply by sharing books with your children and sharing books and not necessarily reading aloud. And sometimes you can just sim open the pages of a book and you can look at the illustrations and you can tell a story. Or you can ask your child questions about the pictures and you can talk about what you see or you can make up a funny story or you can use silly voices. This isn't about reading the printed word, but this is about bonding. And this is about um, reciprocal relationships and serve and return. And this is about the joy you have when you are together and you are having these meaningful moments because every meaningful moment or second you have with your child is building over 700 connections in their brain. Can you imagine the beautiful power we have building our children's brains? So we want families to realize that. And then comes the magic part. This is the part that all of our children wait for. This is the build part of the practice part, I should say. Children get a bright red bag full of high quality, beautiful, multicultural children's books every week that they get to take home. You might see my red bag over my shoulder. And in that red bag are gonna be three to four high quality, multicultural children's books. And I just held up a few. Um, I always have them at my fingertips uh, at my desk here. And so we're looking at books again that show children have that window and mirror so children can see themselves, but also can see the world around them. Um, our books are vetted. Uh, they're high quality, multicultural children's books. Children can see themselves, but also can delve into topics that they might not have ever been interested in before. Poetry, fiction, nonfiction, fantasy, STEM, financial literacy, the list goes on and on. So children come home with these bright, bright red bags and they basically, you know, demand to be read to. And you'll hear stories again and again about how children bring home the red bag and they're saying, mom, dad, abuela, tio, we have to look at these books. And parents tell us, we have to stop everything we're doing and share these books with our kiddos when they come home every Monday or every Tuesday with their book. So this is a lending library system where children are getting a book bag every single week with these three to four high quality multicultural children's books. And this becomes a habit, right? Where it's becoming a habit because we're getting reinforced because positive reinforcement is helping change the behavior. And then of course is the grow part where children are gonna get a blue library bag to keep. And we are going to meaningfully connect children and families to the local library. So children get a blue library bag and they get to go to the library and the librarians recognize a blue bag because we've made the connection. And again, that positive reinforcement from the librarian, oh, you're raising a reader family, let me show you around. Sometimes our sites give away free books in the blue library bag. So now children own books at home. They develop the routines with you with the red book bag. And so they families feel empowered because now they know what to do. They know strategies through the workshops you've been providing and they feel good about what they've been doing with their kiddos. This classic red book bag program has been around for 25 years. We have seen the effects of family behavior change, but families also becoming the advocates for their children with this program. So something else that makes Raising Reader unique is we're able to customize depending on your community. We want the books to reflect your community and also have that window into the outside world. Um, however, we work hand in hand with communities to make sure the titles are relevant. So this is a beautiful example of working with tribal communities and making sure we don't just have any tribal books, but we have tribal titles that are about that specific community. And this happens to be a specific community in California or Nevada or working with uh, communities in the Carolinas 
or with the National Black Child Development Institute or National Council for La Raza and on and on. We truly believe in working hand in hand with that community to make the experience genuine for the families that are reading those books. We're able to diversify multiple funding streams. So whether that is Title I or ESSER funding or LCAP funding or Head Start funding, the alignment between Raising a Reader and different public and private streams of funding, as well as access to our fundraising team will really help set you on a trajectory for starting your program, but also sustaining your program. There are a lot of other high quality early literacy programs and we all work together, right? We're all here together solving a problem. So if your neighborhood, if your region has Dolly Parton Imagination Library, that's wonderful. Your kids have to own books but they also need the reading routine. So they're gonna get your reading routine from Raising a Reader. They might own books from Reading is Fundamental. They might get the prescription for reading books and a book to keep from um, Reach Out and Read. They might get books mailed to them from Dolly Part Imagination Library. They need all of those. You might also have a home visiting program, a hippie or parents as children, and that's an intensive program. There's not one program that's going to solve all of the, the need but for comprehensive literacy change, we need multiple modalities of helping to support families. And Raising Reader fits kind of in the middle in that family engaging piece where it's scalable. It is something that you can reach hundreds and thousands of families at one time because of the scalability and because of the cost. And these are just some of our values. We truly believe in relationships equity, inclusion, family, accountability, and essentialism. You will hear much more about Raising a Reader today, and I'm so excited for the experience you will have. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at my email or hello at raisingareader.org. And I so look forward to hearing from you and from the rest of your experience this morning. Thank you so much.